Hi, my name is Wesley, and this is Kaya, and we'll be going over the first half of Lesson 5 Extensions. So what we'll be going over today is um, we already know how to use variables and sound blocks from previous lessons, and we will, you will be working on your final project today, and, but what we will be learning in the lesson is about the extensions in Scratch. So let's go over how to find extensions. So the extensions are at the bottom left uh, left hand corner under the colored labels. And when you click on it, you can choose a few extensions. And then once you click on it, it will the extension blocks will be added to your Scratch library. And then you can code with them. So let's go to Scratch and we will show you how to do that. So all right, so I'll click, on, oh, excuse me. Um, I'll click on this um, square down here below all the other tabs. And first we see a bunch of these ones. So I'll go with pen. And now all the pen blocks are right under the other set of blocks. So this, going back to the PowerPoint, this leads perfectly into our next section. We will be going over the pen blocks, which is the extension we just added. So what is the pen? So the pen tool allows you to draw using sprites and the sprite can trace its path or create cool patterns. So this is how you can use it to create patterns such as the one you see in, uh, in this picture here. So you can basically draw your screen. So this is really cool. So the first blocks we'll be going over are the pen control. And so we have erase all, pen down, and pen up. So the erase does what it says, so it clears the entire stage. So anything that you had drawn from the previous time you ran your code, it will all disappear. And pen down, it starts drawing when the sprite moves. So you always want to put the pen down first before you draw. Otherwise, when it moves, nothing will be drawn. And pen up stops drawing whenever the sprite moves. So for example, if you want to draw a line, you would have a code, you put pen down, and then you have it move. And at the end, you want to click pen up. So let's do a demo for that in Scratch. Okay, so first, um, after the one flag click, I'll put erase all. Um, it's just a good thing to do so your screen doesn't get too messy. So then um, I'll be putting the pen down and let's move. So maybe I'll move, I don't know, like 50 steps. And then, oh, this is fun. Um, and then I'll bring the pen up at the end. So as you can see, it created that line right there. So when I press it again, it should erase that line because that's the first thing that happens when I uh, press the flag and then it will do it again. Like that, that little line there. Okay, so the next blocks, uh, let's go back to the PowerPoint. And the next block we'll be going over is the stamp. So this, this basically creates a stamp of the sprite on the stage. So we'll show you an example on Scratch uh, right now. But basically, what it does is when you have it stamp, it will create a copy. Well, it's kind of more like an image of the cat. So if you stamp the cat, it will leave a, a duplicate of the cat on the stage. So let's do an example on Scratch. Um, so this is the stamp. Um, it's right below the erase all on the pen. So if we move and then move 50 steps and then stamp, it'll create a cat. And then let's move again so we can see the difference there. So I'll move again, say 100 steps um, like that. So that was really fast, but I'll put in a wait. So uh, what happens here is first the cat, um, first it erases all and then it puts the pen down. So it moves 50 steps, which creates that tiny line you can see there. And then it will wait one second and then it will stamp. So this is basically, this cat is a stamp of your actual sprite. And then it'll pen up and then it'll move 100 steps. So because the pen was up, there is no line following your actual cat, which is this cat. Yes, and we can also do a cool example 
um, where you put move 50 steps, turn 45 degrees, stamp. Uh, do you want to try that? Yeah, let's do that. So, oh, um, I'll take that one out. And then we will rotate there. All right, so this will put the pen down um, and then in a loop, it will move 50 steps, wait a second, stamp the cat and turn 45 seconds again. Oh, and I'll take out the pen off. <laughs> So as you can see, we have now a cat circle of um, this cat that it moves with the pen. So you can actually see the line right there. Um, I will do that. Yeah. So you can see the line better now. And the cat moves, it stamps itself, and then it moves again to create this crazy looking circle. So you can create a lot of really cool patterns using the pen extension. So now we're going to go even further with the pen colors. So with the pen color, you, you can use the set pen color to block to change its color. And you can see just on this PowerPoint how there are three sliders and it lets you control different aspects. You can control the color, the saturation, and the brightness. And so you can think of pen color as like a variable because there are values associated with it. So let's go to Scratch and give that a try. Um, okay. So this is the set uh, pen color. So we can, for now we'll just um, play around with just color. So as you can see, as I rotate along here, um, it shows you all the different colors that you can find and it just gives it a number for each of those colors so if i set this pen color to 43 and i click that block um i will actually put the block right here when the cat moves around it now has that color and you can change this value at any time and it will um, turn into that new color Thank you, Kaya, for the demo. So uh, the next box we'll be going over builds off perfectly from the previous ones, which is change set pen value. So you might be wondering, why is there a number? How can you change a color by a number? Well, uh, in the previous slides and in the demo, you could see how there was a number associated with each uh, color. And you could see it on the slider, the number would change. So with the change pen color by, it changes or uh, changes the pen color based on what, what it already was by a certain number. And with the set pen color too, instead of basing it off of the previous color, the pen was, instead of basing it off of what the pen's color already was, it just automatically sets it to a certain point. So you might be wondering why could this be useful? Well, if you're creating a really complicated program and you want to make sure that a certain color is super consistent and when you need to go back to it, you, instead of going through the slider, if you can remember like, well, the color was uh, 40, then each time you need to switch something to that color, you can just say set pen color to 40 and it will always be exactly the same instead of using the slider to try to figure out like, oh, what was the color I used in the previous part of this program? And then um, with this, you can also change and set the transparency. Uh, as you remember in the slider, there was a slider for color saturation, and brightness and so you can also change the transparency so let's do a demo in scratch yeah so wow. the first um block that we showed you was set pen color to color um and this is really similar to the one we just showed you which uh the difference is that you can change this um to color saturation brightness or transparency and they also have their own oh um, they also have their own um, number system. So let's start with, actually, let's just work with color for now. So if I do this, um, like Wesley was saying, I uh, doing a set means it'll always come back to that same value. So let's start with 50. I don't, okay, 50, that's a pretty color. So let's start with 50. And then let's, um, so first it will erase all, set the color to 50, and then put the pen down. 
And then in our loop, we want to try using this change pen color. Um, this one's really nice because um, it kind of creates a rainbow effect. So we put that in every single time the cat goes, or every single time the code um, goes through this loop, it will change the color. And let's see what that looks like. There we go. So every single time you get this uh, different color, and so you get this rainbow uh, octagon. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so that's a really cool example of what you can do with the pen. So the next block we will look at is the change in set pen size. So this is also, um, also in the name, it basically changes the pen size. So you can see in the that uh, in that PowerPoint that in the Scratch Cat, it clearly has a very large pen size, which is why it creates such a thick line. So um, like with the previous blocks, the change, it changes the pen size by a certain amount based on what it already was. And the set pen size will just set it to a certain, a certain size. And it's not based on what it previously was. So the line thickness can be easily changed using these two blocks. So we can now use that in our scratch demo. Right, so um, similarly to that one, let's try setting the pen, oops, setting the pen size to, um, I don't, I don't know what the scale is, so I'll just start with five, and then how about every single time it goes through here, like the color, so as you can see, there's set pen color and set pen size, and then change pen color and change pen size, so every time let's change it by two, and let's see what happens. So as you can see, it starts at that same thing, and every single time it goes around, it creates a fatter and fatter line. That's a really interesting effect. Other tips. So here are some tips that we went over. Uh, these are basically something that you can see uh, Kea has been doing in all the demos. Mostly, so loops are your friends, you can use them. And you can see Kea use loops to continue to create really cool, intricate patterns. And make sure to erase all at the beginning if you want your sprite to restart every time. And that's something Kea also did. She put in erase all at the top. So each time you run the program, it will start with a blank main canvas. And don't forget to put your pen down or else your sprite will never draw. So that's a very good thing to think about when you're creating a program and you're the first thing you're thinking about is why isn't it working? Well, think about, did I click pen down or put the pen down block? So now we'll look at some practice, uh, some cool things you can practice. So you can see, uh, so with the, can you create a multicolored line? You could see Kea already previously did a demo of how you could do that, or you could also create more intricate shapes like the hexagon she did with the changing colors. Okay, so the next uh, next extension we'll be looking at is the video sensing extension. So uh, let us just go to let us go to Scratch just so you know how to add that one. It's pretty much just like with the pen extension. So, so we uh, click on the same um, extension square down here and click on video sensing, and here our Oh yeah, that's my camera, by the way. Um, and here are the video sensing blocks. There's only four of them. Okay, so the first blocks we'll be looking at are the video on and transparency blocks. So the first block, the turn video on, that block just turns the video on or off with the drop down. So you can click that little white triangle and it will let you choose turn it on or turn it off. And you have to have it on for the blocks to work. So you always want to turn it on first. Pretty much like with a pen down, you want to start with that. So the second block set video transparency to, that one changes um, how transparent uh, the video is. So if the transparency is at zero, it won't, um, if the transparency is at zero, it, it won't be at see-through at all. And if it's at a hundred, you won't see it at all because it's so transparent. And for those of you who might not know what transparency is, you can just think of it as how see-through or how clear it is. So like, for example, glass, it's very transparent because you can see clearly through it, or it's just how much light can get through whatever object. So in terms of this program, the transparency is like how well you can see 
um, the camera or how well you can see the photo. So let's do a demo in Scratch. Yeah, so these are um, the blocks and currently the video uh, is on. So if I turn it off, it goes away to this white screen. So let's leave it, oops, let's leave it on. Um, I'll leave that under the lens flag clicked button. And then let's look at uh, video transparency. Oh, there it is, okay. So uh, currently it's at uh, 50, um, so it's kind of see-through. It's kind of grayish, uh, as you can see, kind of faded. Um, if I change this to zero and put that under here, it's fully um, uh, not transparent, so which is called opaque. Um, and then if I set it to 100, um, it is fully transparent, meaning completely clear. So yeah, those are those two blocks. Okay, so the next block is actually a bit different. It's very similar to the first block that we went through in this class, or in all six of these classes, the very, the very first one we went through, which is one green flag clicked. You can see it has the same shape. So it basically acts like an, an event block and finds out whether your camera's motion is greater than a certain value. And if it is greater than that certain value, then it will do something depending on whichever blocks you place under this one. So make sure your camera is set to on and you probably want your video transparency uh, uh, not very transparent so you can see it when you try this out. So it uses your webcam and basically it calculates how much movement there is. Um, Make sure you have your webcam on. So I'll turn the uh, video transparency to zero so you can see the webcam. And this, um, so like Wesley was saying, as you can see the shape of this block and the when flag click this yellow block, um, they're really similar. So they're like the starting block of any uh, sequences of blocks. So when video motion, so it's kind of this cool thing that Scratch can do, it detects with your camera like if I, there's a lot of motion right now if I put my fingers there, right? So if it's greater than 10, which is for us, just think about it as like something is moving or not moving. So when it's greater than 10, um, we can do stuff underneath. So let's, I guess I'll try out some things with our cat. Um, so every time that it's, the video motion is greater than 10, let's um, move 10 steps and like that. And um, if it's on the edge, bounce back. So every single time there is motion on the screen, as you can see, I'm like waving my fingers, this cat's moving 10 steps. Um, so it's kind of similar to a loop in that sense, but it's really cool because it uses your uh, video uh, camera thing. Yeah, and one thing I can add before we move on is uh, you can input a number, like when video motion is greater than a value. So the higher, the bigger the number is, the more motion you need. So that it's not just when there's any motion at all. Of course, you can use it that way by setting when the motion is greater than a very small number, but when it's like a hundred, you have to move a lot for it to be in moving. Yeah, so that's just what I wanted to add. Okay, and this very final block in video sensing is, um, well, this block is basically a variable that stores information on the motion or direction of a sprite on the, or the stage. Um, you can use it to try and control your sprite through the webcam, depending on the direction of the user's movement, or change the backdrop if the user moves fast enough. So we'll now do a demo in Scratch. Okay, so under the video sensing, we have this um, block that Wesley was talking about. As you can see, it's rounded edges. It has rounded edges, which means you can insert it into other blocks, um, and it returns a number of values. So, for example, um, I will use the looks block, and let's put it in the say. Um, so if I put it in there, it will return or yeah it will print out the um value of motion on the sprite so 
right now, since nothing's moving, the sprite is returning zero. So if I put this in a loop like that, um, basically it continues. Oh yeah, it's also moving, right? Okay. <laughs> um because i left this one on so it's also moving but the number that it uh the sprite says is how much motion is on that sprite so it says 12 one like that um and now it says 100 which is a lot of motion so it kind of yeah it's a really cool uh block you can use that interacts with specific sprites Okay, and so those are the blocks, the four blocks that are in videos, the video sensing extension.